first when I put this on, I thought that this was going to be a nuisance because I wouldn't be able to open the boot. But it turns out that you can open the boot absolutely fine to its fullest extent. Hi, I'm not Richard Simons, I'm Joe, and I am from RSEV. My turn to do a video, and the subject today will be efficiency. How is the car affected when using a roof rack with a load? We've decided to use my kayak. We're going to go from here to Cornwall. We live by the sea, so it makes perfect sense to drive from here to Cornwall, a couple of hundred miles or more, and we'll get the boat in the water. But more importantly, we'll see how much does it affect the efficiency of the vehicle. Uh, we're off to deliver a car, so this is a needed journey. We're traveling in convoy, so it makes great sense to combine it with a sensible and interesting video. So I'd like to know uh, how it works, so let's get stuck in. The roof rack we fitted recently, um, there's a video about that, and uh, you can have a look at that on our channel anytime you like. What's quite cool here is that at first when I put this on, I thought that this was going to be a nuisance because I wouldn't be able to open the boot. But it turns out that you can open the boot absolutely fine to its fullest extent, certainly with this kayak on here. And that's great, in fact. If this were a hatchback, this would render the boot useless. So that's a nice extra bonus of, uh, of this setup, I reckon. So we're going to talk about efficiency. And uh, oh, I could make this a little bit easier for you to see by using this rather excellent swivel screen available at uh, RSEV, actually. So get in touch if you like one. Currently, since we purchased the car, we've done a couple of thousand miles and our average watt hour per mile is 282. So that's kind of going to be our benchmark to see just exactly what difference this might make. Um, you don't see many Model 3s with roof racks. And so I wonder, is that because people have put off the idea? They're worried about range. Uh, and if that's the case, hopefully this video will help with that. And uh, we'll see, won't we? Exeter for a charge mainly so that we can replenish this vehicle so we can drive all the way back but also the car that Gintz is delivering that needs enough charge to complete the journey. It's been quite a mixture of roads in fact the sat nav took us on a quicker route which took us on some more countrified roads so there hasn't been like you might expect a whole load of 70 mile an hour 60 mile an hour swathes of the journey there's been some quite uh, sort of slower sections where we've been going 40 50 maybe 60. So surprisingly, the current uh, watt hour use per mile usage is 280. So if anything, the car is currently more efficient than it was. But I feel that's probably due to the types of driving we've been doing. Hopefully on the way back, uh, we'll have some more continuous higher speed sections. But I did notice that it made quite a lot of difference um, when I was bowling along at uh, at 70 um, so perhaps on the way back when we're both in the car we'll capture some sort of data as it goes just to show you you know what's going on but at the moment on this drive it seems to have made very little difference so let's see how the rest of the day pans out here we are at Exeter where there's a whole load of work going on so anyone who's doubtful about um, the infrastructure for electric vehicles the Tesla supercharger area here is having a huge expansion with uh, loads of high power chargers being added and then GridServe are also expanding, so they're going to have a total of about 24 different chargers here. It don't look like they're going to be that long before they're actually ready to be used. Uh, I've counted 24 chargers here, so this is going to be very easy to get down into Devon and Cornwall and so on. Um, the infrastructure is definitely there and definitely of a high quality, and it's being used. There's lots of people using it, so great to see. Perks off. There's Joe. Come on, Let's go. So how was that? That was very nice. Caught Enjoyed some it. big waves. 
some of them must have been 10 inches so just a little bit of an update really we're now on our way back from Cornwall we delivered the car to Seaton we'll see the efficiency is much less we've seen quite a big change now whereas before it seemed like it was about the same about 280 watt hours per mile now we're looking at 350 watt hours per mile uh, on this since our last charge which is you know to drive to Seaton and back to Exeter uh, where there's quite a lot of 60 uh, quite a lot of motorway dual carriageway type road so it has made an appreciable difference um, although one doesn't make the journey too difficult to complete or anything i still do it you still stop if you're doing this journey either there or the way back you'd still stop for 20 minutes half an hour which is probably all we'll need just to get enough juice to get coffee on board it's not often that you drive there and back in one day so this would be a drive down on holiday with the car loaded up and then drive back so to stop once is perfectly cool so that's an update from me and Gintz about our current situation okay so yesterday we completed our efficiency test with this my model 3 uh, performance this has got 92,000 miles on it so uh, uh, more than running I think you'd agree in, I must say doing terrifically well for that amazing battery health phenomenal drive really a great car if you didn't know that it had that kind of mileage you would never guess testament to how great the EV drive chain is so maybe we'll do something about that in another video I guess perhaps um, but we did our efficiency test in this car with the kayak on the roof and we drove from here to a place called Seaton in Cornwall and we were looking at how the efficiency differed uh, typical efficiency for me is around about 280 watt hours per mile and from what you've seen in the video so far you'll see that in the early part of the journey actually the efficiency didn't really change but we put that down to the kind of roads we were driving on the kind of speeds we were doing it didn't have a dramatic effect but later on when we were going at 70 miles an hour uh, we ended up at uh, uh, an average of 350 watt hours per mile which is well above the average that this car would normally achieve overall uh, we had a total of 307 watt hours per mile which is about a 10 percent increase in consumption so the roof rack clearly does make a difference but it, it's key the speed you're going at which is always the thing with electric vehicles if you want to be a bit more efficient go a bit slower and you'll eke out a lot more range it's more than livable we wouldn't have made that journey any more difficult or complicated to do you know fair distance into Cornwall uh, completely achievable and I reckon if we'd added another adult to the car and some luggage it wouldn't have made a dramatic difference either so yeah I think really interesting to find out and uh, we'd like to know if you've used a roof rack or you know what kind of information you might have on maybe roof boxes a tent box how about one of those uh, or when the car's fully laden but I was more than impressed but I was pretty confident that this Model 3 was going to do a great job and it, and it really did so I hope that was useful and interesting and remember, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get reminders about when we post a new video. And thanks very much for, for watching. Thank you.